thanks again for coming. Uh, we are going to uh, get started in the latest in our uh, Lab Chart Mastery Series webinars and using the Delsus Trino. Um, we are going to hopefully give you a good overview, as I said, and we're going to hopefully uh, give you a good idea about how the thing works from a support standpoint and see if we can answer any questions you might have. To get started here, I'm going to talk about how the webinar is going to go. All the audio from the attendees will be muted, so you won't, I won't be able to hear you during the presentation. However, if you have any questions, you'll have the uh, Go to Webinar uh, toolbar in front of you. You'll be able to type in questions into the questions pane. I'll see those, and I'll be able to answer those at the end of the presentation. Once again, before we get started, as we always do, we want to talk about all the training offerings we have coming up. Uh, we have various lab chart training courses happening in Boston. Uh, in Colorado Springs, you can see uh, we have one in October, one in November, and uh, one in December coming up. Um, we may be adding a couple into the calendar as we go along, so check that out. Um, but one of the things that we are offering, uh, if you haven't uh, been paying attention to, to what we all of our courses we're offering, we're offering a new course in December, on December 13th. It's uh, Advanced Lab Chart Training Level 4. And that Level 4 course is going to be exclusively covering the most advanced features in Lab Chart, really customizing Lab Chart to fit your needs using things like arithmetic and macros. We'll be covering quite a few advanced examples of how customers have used it, uh, Lab Chart in the past to do some pretty incredible things from a custom standpoint. So if you're interested in learning more about that, look out for that one. That's on December 13th in our Colorado Springs office. The other courses we have, Lab Chart Level 1, 2, and 3. Um, We've been offering those for quite some time, but if you enjoy the webinar series, uh, the lab chart training courses that we go through, um, both in Boston and Colorado Springs and occasionally in other locations as well, um, really cover those um, same features you watch in our webinar series, uh, but with a hands-on, uh, you know, instructor-based uh, platform that's really useful for you to find out, you know, what you have in the system that you're using with PowerLab and, and get the most out of it that you can. So look at those on our events page. Um, also, be sure to follow us on our social network. You'll find out more about the events that we're uh, coming up with and the things that we're doing at 80 Instruments. Um, so if you're interested in finding out more about what we're doing, check us out there, please. Uh, before we, One more thing before we get started in the uh, webinar, we're going to talk about the statement of intended use, and we always talk about this, and, and really all we like to say here is that uh, AD Instruments products are intended for research and teaching applications only, and in no way uh, are AD Instruments products intended to be used to diagnose, treat, or monitor a human subject. Um, that being said, we do have equipment that is safe for human connection. One of those things we'll be talking about today is the uh, the uh, Delsus Trino system, but we also have AD Instruments front ends uh, that are certified for connection, uh, both body protection and cardiac protection, depending on the uh, front end. So when you're using those, we do have uh, safety approvals uh, for human connection. AD Instruments Prox is also manufactured under a uh, quality standard um, and our quality management systems under ISO 9001. Um, and the scope of that certification is design, manufacture, sale, and servicing of data recording instruments and software. So uh, we do have the safety and uh, quality management systems in place as well. So what we're going to talk about here in the webinar, we get to the reason you all came here, um, we're going to talk about the, the Delsus Trino system and how we use it with LabChart. Um, the system's components, um, it is used... Um, we're going to talk about all the system components and, and how they're used and how they fit together. Uh, we're going to talk about the installation and setup briefly, um, talk about the uh, configuration utility and how we utilize that uh, to get it running and get data into LabChart through the PowerLab. Um, we'll talk about transmit, transmitter um, uh, attachment and implementation and how that's done. Um, we're going to record some data for you and show you an example of how that's done and uh, show you LabChart setup and data analysis as well. Uh, quick a little bit about the system. Um, it's very quick to set up. Um, that's one of the things I was most impressed about when I first started using it. Um, I got it up and running on my own computer in my office in about five minutes, um, and everything was working great. Um, the system works on a patented parallel bar technology, and I'll show you what that means here in a minute uh, for you in terms of recording and how that works. Uh, there's also a uh, motion artifact suppression in the system as well. Um, the transmission range for the system is 20 meters, um, which is which quite a good distance, so it's especially good, uh, this system, for you know, exercise physiology type studies and things you'll really need to have people moving around quite a bit. 
Um, the transmitters can record EMG and XYZ position of the transmitter. Uh, we'll only really be talking about um, the EMG in, in depth today, uh, but you can also record XYZ position of the transmitter as well. Um, and uh, we also have um, an eight hour use in the transmitters between charges, so that means that you can use this for quite a long time before you switch um, and have to um, do anything uh, outside of actually recording data. Uh, so while I'm switching over here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause the presentation for just one second while I switch over to my video here. And in this video, I'm showing all the different parts of the system here. So hopefully what you can see um, are, are the various parts and features. And, and I'm going to go through each of the parts here. I'm going to change, move the video a little bit just so we can focus on um, the DELSA system itself. So you should see that move here. Um, the parts of the DELSA system is pretty straightforward. Um, we have the uh, base station here. Uh, the base station includes uh, charging stations uh, for up to 16 of the... Uh, wireless transmitters and you can see we have three of them charging currently here. Um, it has on this side uh, three connections. It has the connection to the power lab which is what you see here. Um, it has the power and it has a USB connection to the computer. If I move the video back down here we'll see the other parts. The other parts of the system we're using here um, include the uh, adapter here. We have the uh, Trino adapter um, and, and the uh, cables here going to the Power Lab, and of course we're recording with the Power Lab 35 series um, and getting the data through that. The next and, and final part of this is the transmitter itself. You can see the transmitter, um, it's quite light um, and a good size, and so um, using this is quite easy, and, and you know, the lightness of that uh, makes the attachment um, quite stable. Um, when I was using this on myself, it, it works very well. Um, and what I've done here, uh, simply by uh, pulling it off, I just wanted to show you the parallel bars on the, on the back. Um, this is where we're connecting. And on the front, you'll see an arrow here. And the arrow is going to note the direction in which you want to um, install this, or, or, or rather um, connect this to the subject. Um, the arrow here on the transmitter will want to go in the, uh, on the long axis of the muscle you're trying to record from. Uh, so just keep that in mind while we're putting this on. So to do this, what I'm going to do is just simply grab one of our uh, little stick-on pads here. And I'm going to put the little stick-on pad on, across the parallel bars. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to my subject here. So I'm going to pause the video for just one second, and we'll switch over to my subject to show how, this is, how the connection is done. So if you take a look now, we should switch the video over, and we have Dave here helping me out. Um, Dave already has one sensor connected to him, um, but we're going to do a couple of things to get the second set of sensor. So we have this sensor along one of the long axis of one of his tricep muscles, um, so we have a, a good connection there. And what we're going to use, we're going to use a simple alcohol swab to uh, clean off the area on the bicep that we're going to connect the second transmitter. The uh, second transmitter, we're just going to peel off the other side of the sticky uh, little pad there and uh, get that ready for connection to his arm. And the last thing, as I said before, we're going to connect that uh, transmitter so that the arrow is going along the long axis of the muscles. So you see the arrow there um, pointing the downward direction or the upward direction. And what we'll do is uh, just connect that, uh, that arrow along the long axis of the muscle. Great. So we have that in place. And what we're going to do now is switch over to lab chart. And I've set up lab chart already uh, for, for use here. And hopefully everything works the way I intended. If it doesn't, I'll just go back and change it because um, I had set this up before we implanted everything. Um, but we're going to click record here, and we're going to see if we can get some data from either of the transmitters. Now, um, you'll notice that nothing's coming in now. Um, so what I need to do is I actually need to go and configure the DELSA system to get that up and running. 
Um, so you can see here um, we have now the utility. Uh, the utility, I just created a shortcut on my desktop uh, for that utility, so we're going to use that here. So what we need to do, one more step before we start recording data, is just simply uh, pair those sensors. So once you've pulled them off of the base station, it's very easy to pair the sensors. All you have to do is click the button uh, on the front um, because these are already paired. So we've got one of those and it should be pairing here shortly. Number three is pairing and number four is should be pairing now. Um, so those are already set up. Of course, if these weren't already paired, um, you can click the pair button here to get those up and running and paired. Um, but once those are going, you can see, of course, the uh, battery, the signal strength, um, which is great. And so you have a good feedback mechanism of how things are working there, and you can monitor um, how those batteries and, and the connection are doing as you're recording data. Uh, once we have this up and running, it's just a simple matter of clicking the start button. The start button here is going to run the base station and tell the base station to send the signals uh, to the power lab system. So once I've done that, now we're ready to record data. And I can switch over to lab chart and I can hit start. And what we can see here is data hopefully in channel 1 and channel 2. I just clicked my auto scale button here and you can see this is working. And one, one of the other things you can see is I have a comment showing up. Um, of course, as I said, I set this up before we had data here and you can see that uh, my comments are um, going in all channels when we turn them on. and and uh, just one channel when we turn them off, but that's all right. So we have, oh, and both comments say bicep off. Um, that's the uh, downfall of setting this up beforehand when you don't have any data, but uh, that's all right. So as uh, we see uh, Dave here use his bicep, we see comments go in and mark when those are happening. Um, and, and we also see activity in the tricep as well. Um, as he goes predominantly, using his bicep you can see the activity get larger there and as he uh, predominantly uses his tricep you can see the activity get larger um, in that area as well. Um, so a very easy to set up and, and you can see it's very straightforward. So what I'm going to talk about here is some of the uh, some of the other features that we have going on here and some of the cool things that we uh, uh, we can see in the data. So the first thing you're going to notice is uh, we have uh, the raw data in channel 1 and channel 2, you can see it says bicep EMG here in channel 1, tricep EMG here in channel 2. Um, there's only, for if you're recording simply just EMG, um, the only real thing you need to set up in lab chart to get that up and running correctly is a unit's conversion uh, to get the proper uh, uh, data coming from the DELSA system. And so what I mean by that is the only setup I did in this channel uh, is to do a simple unit's conversion in both channel 1 and channel 2. That unit's conversion is showing me 0 volts equals 0 volts and 1 volt or 1 millivolt equals 909 uh, volts or millivolts. So what that tells us is um, the uh, it's, a, not, it's a 909 times gain coming out of the system. So 1 volt equals 909 volts. Um, and so as you can see here coming into the system, uh, we have our EMG data and our, uh, our, for our bicep and our tricep. The other thing we have here in each of the channels is a simple uh, arithmetic calculation uh, in channel 3 and channel 4. That arithmetic calculation is doing a simple root mean square. Um, and you can see how this is set up to do that. Uh, the root mean square is very common, um, your rectification. Um, algorithm for doing the uh, doing an EMG like this and the way it's done is we simply take you can see this is bicep RMS here in channel 3 we simply take the raw data in channel 1 we square it in arithmetic we do a smooth function uh, which is simply a mean or an average function over time uh, with a moving window and then we do the square root of all of that simple RMS function very easy to do um, and you put that in and we're doing a 0 0.3 second mean, because uh, as we were testing it earlier, that's just what seemed to work best for our data. Um, but we can see a simple RMS is done in channel 1 and channel 2, which gives you then a rectified version of the signal. Um, and as we record more data, you can see um, you know, the RMS come in, and we can get data in both directions, which is great. So um, EMG in both the, R, or the RMS in both the biceps and the triceps. 
The other thing you'll notice here that we're seeing in real time is we're doing some uh, spectral analysis as well. Um, and if I can ask Dave to just, there you go, um, do, do some uh, flexing there. You can see the activity uh, in both the EMG on the uh, tricep and on the bicep. Uh, and what we get out of this, again, is, is a simple reflection of what the component frequencies are of that EMG signal as we go along in the data. Um, and if we stop recording, of course, we can always go back and we can select this area here where we have a tricep um, you know, activity and we can see that activity occurring here in that channel, which is great. Uh, the other thing we have here is in the spectrogram, we can see over time when that muscle activity is occurring. So you can see here, I can select data and show that's a significant bicep activity here at this data point. I can see that one at that data point and going back throughout our entire data file, I can see when that activity occurred in both the biceps and the triceps, which is great too. Um, so we've been recording video obviously this whole time, you've been watching us, so you can also record video uh, during these exercises as well, and of course you can play that back. So we have this old data here, this is still our live demo, um, but if I click this button here uh, and close the live demo, I'm going to open up the movie view. And the movie view is simply going to show us the old data or the old video at, at, along and synced uh, with the data we've been recording. So if I click here, you can see our video updated to show us that time point. If I click play, you can see you can watch Dave um, do his thing there and uh, give us some activity and you can see the data and the video playing along at the same time. So it's a great, a great asset to have when you're doing these types of uh, exercises to be able to record video and see what's happening when you see these uh, EMG activity. So um, as we go along, the next thing you want to know is, you know, how do we analyze the data? So we've already done the RMS. Um, and what I'd like to do is take some of these comments that I've put in place. You can see this comment here uh, showing us where the activity is occurring and I'd like to do some data analysis on it. So you can see the activity, some bicep activity that I've marked with comments. Um, you may be asking how I marked those automatically with comments. It's a very simple uh, procedure in LabChart. Uh, so as we were recording data, I used Event Manager to simply uh, put those comments in bicep, both of them say bicep off. I know one of them should say bicep on, that's all right. Uh, but uh, the uh, bicep activity, when we cross a specific threshold, we added bicep on and bicep off. So what I'd like to do is just analyze some of this data, um, and I'll use just this area right here to analyze. I want to I want to find out what the, I want to find out two things about this data. First, uh, what is the maximum RMS value during those uh, events? And also, what is the median power frequency? So what's the frequency and what is the amplitude? So you can find out both about the overall activity and you can also find out about the frequency analysis of that EMG signal if you're going to be doing some type of fatigue uh, experiments as well. Um, so to do that, it's a very simple procedure. I'm going to simply go to Commands, Multiple Add to Data Pad. I'm going to find data using comments within my current selection. I'm going to find comments containing bicep, and I'm going to select to the next comment containing bicep. And what I'm going to get out of this is simply two data points or rather three, let's see what we get here. Um, so we got that activity here, and so what you're seeing out of this is in this area and this area here uh, especially, uh, we're getting the RMS maximum value, so you can see that this event is larger than the one before it, and we also see the median power frequency. You can see the frequency is slightly lower in this event uh, than it was in this event. So that's just a good overview of how we're going to utilize this in lab chart. Uh, we have, again, a um, very simple setup. You can see the only thing we really needed to do uh, was utilize the Delsus Trino um, 
utility here and get everything up and running. We can monitor the uh, sensor information. We start the system by clicking start. Once you've done that, really all, all you have to do to get things set up here is to do a simple units conversion and get things into the right format. And lastly, we want to do our RMS activity in another channel uh, to give us the rectified version of that signal. Uh, once we've done that, we can analyze this in many ways, including using the data pad to do it, uh, which is what we've done here. And we've gotten um, some assessment of those two events. Uh, this can be done automatically if you put in comments like we've done here. Um, so you can see overall it's a very simple solution. Uh, if you need to record EMG wirelessly, uh, that si this system is set up to, be, to make it as easy as possible for you to do that. Um, and of course, you get all the the great features in LabChart to go along with it to make your data analysis on back end easy as well. So that's it for the presentation in terms of what we wanted to cover today. Um, so what I'd like to do is see if there are any questions. I don't see any questions in here now, uh, but if you do have any questions, uh, let us know. We'll stay around for a few minutes and we'll see if we can uh, address those for you. Otherwise, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming and uh, we'll see you again next time.